good morning, everyone. And it is March 31st, 2021. It's 935 our clock. And this is the East River, Minnesota Regional Water Supply Authority Board of Directors meeting. Oh, that has to be pushed. Sorry. Uh, we're going to have uh, Doug Manson lead us in the invocation, and since this is his home court, uh, Commissioner Truex will lead us in the pledge. If you're able, all rise. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and pray you for bringing us safely here today, Lord. We ask you to bless these proceedings, Lord, and give wisdom to the board and discernment to make decisions that are wise for the people. Lord, we ask you to bless those who are providing first responder service, military service, or health care service. Bless them with health, bless them with energy, Lord, to do their jobs and wisdom to stay safe. Lord, we ask you to put your peace upon us all in this country, and we ask the Lord to continue to work through each one of us to show your love. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, we're going to start like we usually do. We may have skipped it once or twice because of uh, COVID, but let's start in this right-hand corner. We're welcoming our guests. Stand up and just say your name, and we'll rotate through the room. Indoors, Charlotte County. Tim Ratio. Excuse me. I probably would have with the water supply authority. Chris Tanner, Katie Duty, HDR. John Ferguson, public water awareness assistant. Gloria Popescu. DMK. Mr. Mr. Ritchie, I think it's you now. Mark Jones, Reese Engineering. Tim Ritchie, March Against Mosaic. Okay, well, thank you for that. And before we get to public comments, Mr. Flores is going to welcome us or holler at us or straighten us out, one or the other. I'll just go with a welcome, absolutely. So uh, thank you, Chairman Mayo. So on behalf of um, our board, for our administration team, I want to welcome everybody to, to Charlotte County, to our board chambers. Um, it's always an honor to host the, the Water Authority, knowing that, that your vision, your planning is going to be implemented today with the decisions that you make here on the agenda. So uh, for us, you know, partnerships is what it's all about. We appreciate the partnerships that we have, um, even beyond the Water Authority. It's road projects, beach projects, legislative issues, um, pandemic response. Um, it's been amazing. So I do want to share, I want to thank um, your administrators and your administrative team, utility staffs for the partnerships that, uh, that we've done. Um, we each bring our individual interests and needs to the table. Um, with that, I want to thank Pat because his team, uh, you know, his, his staff, they've helped kind of weave all that together uh, for the benefit of the region. So. With that, again, welcome. Have a great meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to do open to the public. We've got five speaker cards. I, we always take them in the order that they were received, but I'm going to use the massive power at my discretion to put one person first in line, and that would be Adeline Howard. <laughs> Hello, my name is Adeline Howard. I'm in the four, do the four Dogs and 4-H Club. I am doing a pig next year. 
and I'm do, gonna do the chicken barbecue next year. Last this year, I did the chicken barbecue. I went first place and I got ten dollars. I did creative living at the Lee County in Southwest Florida Fair, and that is it. Well, thank you very much, young lady. Uh, okay, now we've got four speaker cards. Uh, they'll get three minutes each. Uh, Tim Ritchie, you're first. And Mr. Manson, you're running the clock. So I'm going to have to reset it. There we go. Do you got a handout, Mr. Ritchie? Give it to, to Pat. Well, good morning, commissioners and everybody, the Peace River, Minnesota Water Supply Authority. Also, good morning, Governor DeSantis and Congressman Stubbe. I handed you out today an aerial photo of Manatee County. The red dot is Piney Point. See these photos up here? This is the Mosaic New Wales 2016 sinkhole. Next to it's the Mosaic Bartow, Jib Stack. Here we have a clay settling area in Fort Meade. Now I handed you out this map that shows Mosaic. Piney Point is the perfect example of why phosphate mining should be ended in the state of Florida. Our water supply, if there is a sinkhole on the river, we don't have very much water for Charlotte or DeSoto County. Why is it when they are discharging 400 million gallons from Piney Point into the bay by Jeff Barath at HRK Holdings, why would any one of us in our right mind want to allow Mosaic Fertilizer to pull 70 million gallons, everybody? That's just one permit in Polk County alone. It doesn't make any more sense. Even worse, This is State Road 72, State Road 70, which will be the entrance to the potential possible Mosaic 2023 beneficiation chemical plant. I cannot, for the life of me, this young lady who first spoke before me, that's why you see me at these meetings. That's why I drive an hour to Manatee or to DeSoto or to Hardy. I want all of you to seriously write Governor DeSantis today. And I want you to tell him we need to end the phosphate mining in Florida. We need to no longer allow Mosaic to rape and destroy our beautiful Florida. We have attorneys like Jeff Brown at the FDEP. He's a real piece of work. I've dealt with him. He likes destroying our beautiful Florida. Thank you all for your time today. I really appreciate it. Okay, Michael Sarzano, you are up next.
Good morning. My name is Michael Zarzano. I am with the Charlotte County Congress and Assembly of Florida Citizens. I am here today to put you on notice by the authority of the people of Florida and the Florida Constitution pursuant to Article 1, Section 1. All political power is inherent in the people. Article 1, Section 5, the people shall have the right to peaceably assemble to instruct their representatives to petition for redress of grievances. We have and are forming a Charlotte County Town Hall Assembly to instruct you by the consent of the governed and the united opposition and objections to water pollution by the corporation called Mosaic. And to multiple counties of Florida, we object. We demand a referendum on this issue by multiple counties that a referendum be put on the ballot and that the people of Florida have the right to make the decision to stop mosaic phosphate mining and the pollution of our historic pristine environment. Historic in the eyes of the world. Mosaickills.com is the website I want all of you to visit. We have prepared five videos to demonstrate the evidence and the destruction that this corporate monster called Mosaic is doing to the state of Florida. Mosaickills.com. The people are demanding that this be stopped. I can show you a, an arsenal of articles in the last two weeks. Today's newspaper, water flowing from Piney Point. High concentrations of nitrogen, phosphate, this is the very product, byproduct, that fertilizes red tide. In the months ahead, we will be having assembly meetings in Charlotte County, Inglewood, Punta Gorda. We have already assigned to us a building that seats 1,000 people where we may assemble the consent of the governed and instruct you as to our objections and our redress of grievance. We honorably ask you to listen to the cry of the people and to stop this mosaic monster from polluting the Florida aquifer, the Florida streams and rivers, and by dumping high concentrations of nitrogen and phosphate into the water, which fertilizes red tide, which is destroying this great historic vacation land known as Florida. Thank you. Please listen. Thank you. Cynthia Compton, you are next. Good morning. Thank you for allowing us the time. Um, to speak and you're welcome for the knowledge that you're gaining from especially Mr. Zarzano and Mr. Ritchie. This area is very special to me, Tamiami Trail in fact. My daddy just turned 83 years old and he was born in Tampa. I was born in Miami almost 58 years ago so this area is very special. My grandparents had property up in Okeechobee fished that lake many times, fished the Everglades many times, Biscayne Bay with my dad. Um, this water, this state is precious to me. I've always felt that God placed me in a very special place called Florida. I always thought that I was privileged, something special about being born and raised in Florida. Mosaic is destroying that. You have been given much information over the past few year, couple years. If you haven't gained it on your own, which sitting in those chairs and not doing that, that's not a good thing. You ran for the commission, 
you were elected the commission to do something and that wasn't to control and have your own way. That was to look out for the best interests of the people in your community. I know water, the water in Charlotte County has got major problems. Why are we not getting any better at this? You guys need to ask yourselves that. I don't envy your position. That's why I haven't run. But you did. And you, you, asked to be, you asked for your feet to be put in these shoes and you have to fill them. Why would you want to make your job that much more difficult by allowing these permits to a company because they have billions of dollars? Why don't you ban the people? Why don't you listen to the people and not the ones who buy into the bull crap? Oh my gosh. I stood out in front of the arena a couple weeks ago and I couldn't believe the people. Mosaic gives lots of money to charity. They have to, to ease their conscience. And if they didn't, if, why are we here? If, 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 if everything's okay with our water, why are we here? And if it's not okay that we have to be here, then why are we not doing what we need to do to fix it? Stop poisoning it so that we don't have a job unfulfillable. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, the last card I have, if there's any other cards, we need to get them up here. Now the last card is Eric Howard, and I'll just editorialize a little bit. His greatest achievement to date, in my eyes, is uh, giving us his daughter, Adeline. <laughs> Uh, thank you, elected officials. Um, glad Elton's here. Sorry he missed Adeline there. But I understand the sacrifices that you make as, as political leaders, and I'm not in your shoes to make those decisions. We just heard some passionate speakers talking about things that you can do, write letters, uh, make decisions, and make hard decisions. And I'm, I'm not up there, and I understand that there's a sacrifice, and you can only do so much. Uh, but voting is not enough today. And I used to say, hey, don't complain if you don't vote. Now it's don't complain if you don't vote and if you don't tell somebody and if you don't email somebody and if you don't call somebody. So I drink your water and I pay for your water. So you all are my representatives. So I want some action from you all. You took an oath of office to uphold and defend the Constitution. Not only do I want you to defend it, I want you to be on the offense for our Constitution. I now expect my leaders to do what they can do above and beyond normal service. Now, I'm getting political and I don't want to be a hypocrite because I'm as passionate about politics and the freedoms that we have as I am about Jesus Christ, my personal Lord and Savior, who's, who we're celebrating his rising this Easter, who rose from the, gra the grave after three days in it. And so, he is risen. So I'm going to have a few political issues, and I think I'm going to bring them up to this, this board. You, my elected officials, every, every board meeting, I'm going to do two or three today. Right now, it's the freedom of speech. And what a great speech we have to be able to get up here and hear from constituents that have issues and concerns. My issue and concern is big tech censoring us. You guys have used big tech for some of your political campaigns related to Peace River agenda. I'm fine with you continuing to do that, but I would ask that you write letters to our elected officials and those people higher up, including in the federal government and the state government, saying that you oppose big tech suppressing the freedom of speech. And the freedom of speech, two thir section 230 makes big tech an agent of the state. And there's a clause in there, no provider or user of an interactive computer service shall be held liable, da, 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 da. And it says, otherwise objectionable, whether or not such material is constitutionally protected. That makes them an agent of the state. So they're not like a normal business that can just do what they want to do. I'm happy, make it so we can sue them, make it so we can take effort. Governor DeSantis is trying to do something. Please show your, show your support to uh, Governor DeSantis, and uh, I'd to ask you to continue to use social media as you see fit to further uh, uphold the authority's role, but 
at least write a letter to our elected officials. And my second one is I would have shaved my neck better. And the other thing that I ask you to do is get rid of daylight taving, savings times. Pick one or the other because even your employees would appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, I do not have any other speaker cards, so this is your last opportunity uh, today. Uh, we're, go we're on to the awards and recognitions. Uh, we have two very nice ones. The first one, uh, I'll read it into the record. Uh, it's the commemoration of the Charlotte County Centennial. After I read it in the record, we'll need a motion. Uh, so. With that said, whereas Southwest Florida was largely uninhabited until settlers established the neighborhood of Charlotte Harbor after the Civil War, whereas stores and businesses grew to supply the early settlers with development beginning in the early 1900s, and whereas Charlotte County was created on April 23, 1921, when Governor Carrie A. Hardy signed a bill dividing DeSoto County into five counties, Charlotte, Hardy, Highlands, Glades, and DeSoto, and whereas in the post-World War II period, vacationers from the North returned year after year to enjoy sport fishing, boating, and the natural environment, and whereas home sites in Port Charlotte were marketed in northern newspapers and magazines in the 1950s and 1960s with many new residents, and Charlotte County began to take shape, and whereas during the past century, the par population of Charlotte County has grown from under 4,000 to over 180,000 residents, and whereas today Charlotte County is a vibrant and thriving community and a regional partner joining cooperatively with DeSoto, Manatee, and Sarasota County in assuring a reliable and safe water supply for the region. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Peace River, Minnesota Regional Water Supply Authority does hereby, hereby join in commemorating Charlotte County on its Centennial celebration done at Port Charlotte, Florida, this 31st day of March, uh, 2021. And we've signed it, and uh, let's have a round of applause. That's a very big deal. Very big deal. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Uh, Truex, Commissioner Truex. Thank you, sir. Um, it would be my honor to uh, make a motion to approve the aforeread um, proclamation. Second. Okay, a motion by Commissioner Truex, seconded by Commissioner Langford. Any discussion? Anything at all? Mr. I think Truex? I think we have a couple other ones coming on too. <laughs> As you just read, uh, we have a few of them coming on for our, our centennial. So, and actually, it's our Sarasota counties also. We just started. Right. Ours. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. With that said, we have a motion to approve. Uh, but. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Is, any, is anyone opposed? The chair absolutely votes aye. Uh, and that passes uh, for our record four to zero. Now we're gonna take a brief moment and uh, they didn't want a picture of me, they wanted a picture of Commissioner Chuex. But uh, I'm, I'm gonna stand in the picture also. <laughs> Here buddy, you gonna do about a flag? Let's see yeah, it. she wants the flag. Flex? Yes, yeah. Yeah. right by the seal, yep. All right. That's perfect. Thank you, sir. Still on the way. It's okay. Okay, we're on item number two of the agenda, Florida Section American Water Works Association presentation. And we have two people that'll help us with the presentation, Pat Lehman, the Executive Director, and Richard Anderson, the Director of Operations. I yield to my comrade in crime here, Richard Anderson. <laughs> That's always a dangerous thing to do. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I appreciate you giving us a few minutes. I know we're on a tight schedule today. Um, but this award is generally given out at the awards luncheons at the, uh, the conferences. And since we haven't had conferences in a year and a half, the board of directors has asked that we try to give these out on the home front and present them uh, to the awardees. 
Uh, what we're here today to do is give the Dr. Edward Singley Award of Excellence Award out. And this is basically for the Volunteer of the Year for the American Waterworks Association. If I can read just real briefly the, the uh, citation. This award is given by the FSAWWA Executive Committee to a board member for dedicating their time, talents, and energy to a program or initiative which far and away exceeds their normal duties and obligations to the section. So this year's winner uh, for 2020 was selected for their efforts as the local host chair for the uh, national conference, which, which was supposed to be in Orlando, which obviously got canceled and, and we never had the conference, but duties included organizing 1,700 volunteers for this conference, arranging for local tours for spouses, uh, booking travel for staff and, and other uh, dignitaries and guests. So all that work had to be done even though the conference was canceled. So for those efforts, uh, the 2020 winner of the Ed Singley Award is our very own Terry Holcomb. Okay. So. And, and she had no idea. She asked me right before the meeting, what's this item two down here? What is that? What is that? <laughs> so, Speak. Terry, congratulations. This is your award. Thank you. Thank you, you earned it. You deserve it. Wow. <laughs> you want to say anything? Congratulations, Terry. I, I actually was blindsided. Um, and I'm very honored. This is a very prestigious award. And I did know Dr. Singley. And I see Bob Cushing back there. Um, and he is definitely a testament to the industry. So it's. Uh, I, I'm looking out and I'm just thinking, can I ask anybody who's a member of AWWA to stand? Just so we can see in our industry. Wow. For an organization that's dedicated towards science and education, you can see that it's well represented in, in the, the folks out here doing the work on a day to day basis. So I'm honored. Thank you. C can we get a picture with Pat and my uh, yeah. And if that, that's it. Well, we we are we are just delighted to have uh, Terry with us, and uh, thank you so much for being part of our uh, office and staff and administration. And I know in my last six years, you've you've shown me a lot of uh, things that I didn't know, and we all appreciate you here very much. With that, we are now on the uh, consent agenda. It's items one through 10. So uh, we'll take a motion. I have not no a consent, a consent item that has been pulled. So with that, Mr. Truex, Commissioner uh, Truex. I, I actually would like to have a conversation about item seven. Okay. And I'd move approval of the balance, sir. Okay. Uh, Second. Motion by Commissioner Truex. Seconded by Commissioner Langford. Items one through 10, with the exception of number seven, which has been pulled. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Is anyone opposed? Uh, chair votes aye. That moves forward 4-0. Uh, Commissioner Truex, number seven. Um, I plan to move approval on this, but I just want to have a brief conversation about um, uh, exposure and about self-insurance portion uh, as the limits that apply to our current policy and the increase we're looking at, uh, should we be having any kind of discussion on being more self-insured or less self-insured? Well, um, first of all, uh, Ann Lee and your staff. Um, Mike. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> Typically don't need a mic because I'm pretty loud, so. <laughs> <laughs> they want it in the, in the room back Ah, there. okay. Um, well, when um, this question was presented at, to us, um, I did some investigation regarding the self-funded um, idea because it is a good idea to try to save some money long term. Upon investigating it, I discovered there is a Florida statute, a 624.4622, which requires any local government agency that 
would like to self-fund, they have to prove that they have had annual premiums in excess of $5 million. Um, so with our premium being less than $350,000 a year, we do not qualify under that provision. Very good. Thank you very much. Yes, I appreciate sir. that explanation. And I'd move approval. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. Thank you. Move approval on item number seven by Commissioner Truex, seconded by Commissioner Langford. There's no other discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. Item number seven under consent moves forward with a 4 0 approval. We are now on the regular agenda, and it's the water supply conditions. Uh, the presenter is Richard Anderson, and uh, this is just a status report. We do not need a motion. Mr. Anderson. Correct. There we go. Sorry about that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, for the record, Richard Anderson of your staff. This is, as you said, the uh, water supply conditions report. It's an information item only. Uh, we'll go through the, uh, the water supply conditions through the month of March and the demands for the month of February for, for, the, for the customers. Um, as you can see here, the, the rainfall, uh, we had very little rainfall in March. The, the tap has, has dried up. We had about a half an inch. Uh, we did have a pretty good February, which allowed us to have some water available to withdraw, but through the month of March, we only had about 0.45 inches of rain in the basin, so it's so a very little rainfall. Uh, but that's to be expected. We're starting the, the dry time of the year. So uh, as you can see, the river flows, as I mentioned, they're, they're starting to taper off. Uh, through March 15th, we had about 350 cubic feet per second flowing in the river. As of today, that's down to about 135. So we're right down at the cusp of the, of the red line, which is our minimum flow required for withdrawals. Uh, we actually stopped pumping from the river yesterday. So we're now totally reliant on our storage system. And again, here's river withdrawals. Uh, through the 15th, we averaged about 17.2 MGD from the river. So about half of our demands were being met with the river withdrawal and the other half was coming from storage. And the good news, looking at the surface water storage, as I said, we still have, as of the 15th, about 6.3 billion gallons in the surf surface water system. As we stand here today, that's tapered off. 05. Did my mic stop working? Yo, you're good. It's now, yo. Oh, okay. Sounded like it quit. So as we enter the dry season, we're still over 6 billion gallons. We're still in great shape with our, our surface water storage. And ASR remains basically unchanged, just a shy under 9 billion gallons in the system. We took about 110 million out of that for some testing during the month of March, but we're right at uh, nine or 8.9 billion gallons in that system. And as we enter the dry season, as I said, a usable storage, we have about 335 days of usable storage. That's at our average day of 27, or I'm sorry, that's at our contract amount of 34.7. So if we had to meet all contractual obligations, we have about 11 months of supply to meet demands of the customers. Looking at our average day, we have 430, or about 423 days, which is about 14 months of, of supply. Now we'll take a quick look at the February water production. Uh, as you can see, the authority delivered an average of about 33 million gallons a day for the month, which is quite high for us. Uh, county and city facilities averaged about 43. Total demand was about 76 MGD. Again, three of that, three and a half of that, goes to the non-authority customers served by Manatee County. So the total use by authority customers is about 72.3 million gallons a day for, for February. You take a look at the individual customers, uh, Charlotte County used 11.6 from the authority or 72% of their allocation. 
uh, 55 uh, or 0.55 from their burnt store facility. Total used was 12.16, or average of about 63% of your allocation. Um, as you can see, the the long-term number, the growth or 12-month running average is just up a slight tick from <coughs> the 2020 number. So usage is still fairly high compared to uh, look, when you look back at 2018 and 2019. DeSoto County used uh, about 0.78 from the authority or 114% of their allocation. Uh, burnt, or the um, correctional facility used only about 90,000 gallons a day. Usually that's a little bit higher, um, but that was about 12% of the permitted capacity there. Total used was about uh, 0.87 million gallons a day. And you can see Manatee County, they used about 34 million gallons a day uh, delivered to their customers within their service area. Exported about 4 million to Sarasota County and again the other 3.65 to their non uh, for their consecutive customers uh outside of the, the uh, city boundaries county boundaries total use was 41.57 which is 80 percent of their total permitted capacity and sarasota county sarasota used 17.5 million gallons a day from the authority or 116 percent of their allocation uh imported Again, 3.79 from Manatee County, and actually sent a little bit of water, 0.3, to the city of Northport. Their total usage was 21.6 million gallons a day, or 64% of your capacity. And the city of Northport. City of Northport used 2.91 million gallons a day for the month. They were actually doing some work as at their facility, so they counted on us to supply some extra water to the to the city. So we supplied them with about 102 percent of their allocation that, uh, in February. Uh, as you can see, they only produced 0.6 for the month because of the work they were doing. Took a little bit of water, 0.19 from Sarasota County. Total usage was 3.7 or 60 percent of their allocations. And when you look at the regional demand, the overall regional demand. Uh, for the last 12 months has been running 76.2, down just a little bit from the water year 2020. Uh, but when I factored in the new numbers, I counted, you can see this big jump, almost f 5 million gallons between 2019 and 2020. That pushed our long-term average increase to 2.4% per year when you're going back over the 10-year period. So so growth is definitely, when, when you take the 5 previous years going back to about 2015 to now the growth is is really starting to show uh, on these later years in these graphs so um, when you take a look now this is the available water uh, as usual we have uh, 104.7 available we use just about 76 million gallons leaving 28.7 which is about 73 percent of our allocations that we use for the month of february and with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions, folks? I don't see any, Richard, and thank you for that. Perfect. Thank, thank you. We're on item number two, water supply security. It's a staff presentation by Mike Coates, our deputy director. And this also uh, is a status report, so we won't need a motion. Uh, let me read the, the rest of this into the record. Security of public drinking water supplies nationwide has been highlighted recently by the February 5th, 2021 cyber attack and system breach that occurred in Oldsmar, Florida. Maintaining a secure and reliable drinking water supply is critical <clears throat> to public health and safety as well as supporting social and economic conditions. Staff will now discuss measures in place to maintain water supply security in our regional system. Mr. Coates, how are you? Good, good. Thank you, Mr. Chair, board members. Mike Coates of your staff. Uh, the chair just read uh, part of my first spiel here, so. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Sorry. That's good. You guys have to rehearse. Yeah. <laughs> I get hollered at, Mike, if I don't read everything that's under the bullet, so I apologize. Yeah, that. <laughs> that is ruthless that's, about. Uh, <laughs> So as the Water Supply Authority uh, provides water in a region of a million people now, 
uh, from our Peace River facilities and 80 miles of regional transmission pipelines, we are and we always have been serious about security. And in the next few slides, I want to highlight just a few of the measures, and these are very, uh, just a very few of the measures we have in place to uh, help protect uh, your regional water supply system. So you can see the reservoir system here, and, and while a square mile of water looks pretty inviting for recreational purposes, one of the advantages of having an off-stream reservoir system and controlling the property around that, that, uh, that uh, off-stream reservoir system is being able to limit access. And other than supervised tours, there is no public access uh, to these, uh, to these uh, reservoirs. Uh, so that, uh, that is a good thing for security and uh, perhaps not a good thing for recreation, but, but it works for us. All of our water supply uh, facilities, uh, supply and storage facilities are fenced. Uh, they have uh, surveillance and they are restricted to authorized personnel only. And it's a federal offense to break into these. It's not just a trespassing. If you break in, it's a federal offense. We had staff from the Department of Homeland Security come out and do an inspection and an audit uh, just, uh, just a few years ago. Uh, and they conducted an audit of the physical and cyber vulnerabilities of our facilities. They made recommendations for improvement uh, and we imp implemented those recommendations that they had. They were good recommendations and, uh, and we have implemented all of them. Uh, in addition, uh, we often have the county law enforcement uh, folks out here on the site, uh, and, and uh, they also do training on the RV Griffin site, too. So we have a, a sort of a voluntary uh, level of, uh, of uh, law enforcement uh, activity out there. The Peace River Water Treatment Facility is staffed on site 24-7, 365. There is no remote operation of this facility. All of the operation is done on site. So our operators monitor uh, and adjust plant functions, performance. Uh, they continuously review uh, what's going on uh, on the facilities, but they're not stuck behind a computer either. They go out, they inspect the facilities, they're out on the facilities. Uh, at uh, all kinds of uh, all kinds of hours, so um, a lot of eyes uh, on what we have going on out there. The problem in Oldsmar resulted from someone gaining access to their SCADA system, and the SCADA system is the system that allows uh, them to remotely operate their facilities. They adjust chemicals, they adjust flows, they adjust whatever they need to adjust. So someone gained access to that and they changed some of the water treatment plant settings. Uh, that is not an option at our plant. We do not have an internet connection uh, to these facilities. Like I said, they are all operated on site. <coughs> water supply security is a national priority. Uh, the America Water, uh, water Infrastructure Act of 2018, also called OWEA, uh, is administered by the EPA, and AWEA requires water systems serving more than 3,000 customers to complete risk and resiliency assessments of their systems, considering all of their assets, and their assets would be treatment facilities, storage facilities, pumping facilities, and to assess the potential threats to those assets. And those include, uh, those threats include uh, natural disasters like hurricanes, uh, terrorism, cyber attack, and from that resiliency assessments, utilities were required to develop an emergency response plan and submit that to the EPA. And the authority completed both of those in 2020. <clears throat> Water supply security is a top priority for us. And the unfortunate incident to the north of us highlights the importance of having good security measures and keeping our water supply safe. 
while the other utilities in this region have security measures too, all of us have them, um, to protect the water supplies. That incident in Oldsmar uh, makes us ask ourselves, what can we do better? And those are the conversations that we're having uh, at our agency now. And I suspect those are conversations that were spurred uh, by everyone uh, in the water business. So with that, uh, that's just a brief overview of some of the security measures uh, for our system. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Any questions? Okay, thank you. I, I would like to say thank you for your proactive approach. Um, and, you know, we've seen what happens in voting systems and in water systems when they're connected to the Internet. So this is a, a very smart decision um, by this agency. So thank you. Here, here. <clears throat> Okay, thank you, Mike. Uh, with that, we're on item number three. This is going to be a legislative update, and uh, Patrick, uh, Mr. Lehman, our executive director, and Doug Manson, our general counsel. This is also a status report. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'll just give you a brief intro that included in your board book is the legislative priorities that the board approved last, uh, last year. Uh, things are moving forward that I can tell you that we submitted state funding request for the Project Prairie and uh, that the House and Senate both came out with their proposed budgets yesterday, I believe. It is included in the House budget. It was not included in the Senate budget, so the games and negotiations will begin, but we're uh, well in tune and in place in, in the House side, so uh, we'll hope that comes to fruition. Our, our uh, Lobbyist, which is Laura Donaldson, works with, with uh, Doug, uh, is uh, just sent out yesterday a matrix of where all the different bills stand that impact us, and we'll be forwarding those to the board. But Doug, if you have anything, I'll turn it to you. Nope. I'm just to say at this point we're about halfway through the session, and it's a very unusual session from what I'm uh, hearing from my law partner, Laura Donaldson, from the standpoint of a COVID impact. I mean, obviously, uh, very difficult, can't go into the, to the Senate without an invitation from this, the Senate President's uh, Chief of Staff. And in the House, you go in and you make your presentations and you walk out. So the idea of lobbying, i.e. talking to people in the lobbies, uh, it doesn't really exist, this one. So it's, it's making it a little bit more difficult to communicate with the legislators. Uh, you know, COVID has made many things more difficult. But uh, there's a lot of communication going on, and there's uh, presentations being given from the Civic Center, and we've had a number of, of interactions to, to move through it. And so far, they're making great progress. Uh, looks like they're on time. Okay, any thoughts, folks? Do we need to call Senator Albritton on the uh, Senate uh, budget? Uh, we'll be having conversations. <laughs> okay, thank you. <clears throat> Next, uh, we're on item number four, which is the five-year capital improvement plan and the 20-year capital needs assessment. Uh, our deputy director, Mike Coates, is going to be the presenter. And this, the, the recommended action on this isn't exactly a motion, but it's a board discussion and direction. So, Mr. Coates, and I'm not reading anything. <laughs> <laughs> I learned. I'm a quick learner. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> okay, Mr. Chair, board members, Mike Coates, again, your staff. Uh, regular item number four is a presentation on the draft five-year capital improvements plan, that is the CIP, and the 20-year capital needs assessment, or the CNA. The CIP and the CNA are presented for your review and discussion today. We will be presenting the final draft of this plan, seeking board approval uh, at the June 2nd board meeting. Some of the projects included in the CIP uh, will also have some bearing on the budget issues that Pat will discuss in the next item. We have 16 projects identified for completion in the next 20 years. Uh, 11 of those uh, projects will begin design or construction between 2022 and 2026, which is that five-year CIP horizon. So those are in the CIP. Uh, we have eight transmission projects in the next 20 years. Five of those would begin design or construction within the next five years. We have four water supply projects identified 
two of those, the new reservoir and expansion of the water treatment plant, will begin design and construction in the next five years. And we have four system-wide benefit projects, and these are projects like raw water ASR, uh, the acquisition, regional acquisition of the Project Prairie Pump Station, uh, uh, new, uh, new ranch house uh, building, those sort of things. All four of those projects are programmed in the next five years. The summary of the proposed five-year CIP for 2022 to 2026 is shown here with spending by year. The total spending uh, for the five years is estimated at $190 million. Uh, and the estimated co-funding from Swift Mud uh, for that would be $76 million. Now you'll note a large jump in spending in 2026. The reason for that jump is that that is when we expect to go to construction with a reservoir and 45 miles of regional transmission pipelines. So they all start in 2026. Now, while Swift Mud has generously co-funded prior uh, regional transmission and regional supply projects, certain costs uh, in those projects aren't eligible for Swift Mud co-funding, and those costs include land and easement acquisitions. Um, there are other projects that we have in the CIP and the CNA that also don't qualify for co-funding, and those include moving pipelines because of roadway changes, replacing older pipelines and those sort of things. So that is why uh, you see the Swift Mud co-funding uh, at somewhat less than 50% of that total uh, planned investment. The distribution of projects we see here for the five-year CIP, uh, heavy into water transmission projects, 61%, water supply projects at 32%, and then system-wide benefit projects at 6.4%. 20-year capital needs assessment that would go from 2022 to 2041 uh, includes project spending for the five-year CIP and the 15 years following the project or following the five-year CIP. Total projected cost for the 20-year CNA is $658 million with $308 million in projected Swift Mud co-funding. You see the heavy lifting in this program takes place in about the, the next eight to nine years with the reservoir expansion of water treatment uh, capacity and about 45 miles of new transmission mains. Following that, from 2030 to about 2034, we've got a bit, a bit of a hiatus in the capital improvements plan. And then in uh, 2035, starting in 2035, we have a new water supply and two new pipelines uh, coming uh, into design and construction through that time frame. So the cost distribution here is 43% for pipelines, 55% for water treatment, and 2% for system-wide benefit projects. <clears throat> All of our new supply projects in the CIP and CNA are located at the Peace River facility. Uh, the first increment of new supply capacity, the new reservoir and water treatment plant expansion is in the five-year CIP. Uh, that project is in the feasibility study now. That feasibility study will be completed uh, the end of this year uh, we will begin design and permitting in 2022 and finish in 2026, then begin construction 2026 to 2028 with an estimated two years after that for filling. Now, I wanted to show a time-lapse photo of the construction of Reservoir Number 2, and this will give you an idea of the general construction progress that we expect for Reservoir Number 3. You can see in the top left of the photo, this is reservoir number one, and of course this area here is what is going to be reservoir number two. Construction on reservoir number two started in December of 2000, whoops. <coughs> started in December of 2000, 
started in 2007. And you can see the clearing and grubbing. Uh, the outside here would be the embankment. This inside area is the area that's being mined to provide the material uh, for the embankment. And about three and a half million cubic yards of material were moved from this inside area to build the embankment. That's 175,000 dump truck loads <laughs> of the dump trucks you see on the, on the road. So lots and lots of trucks. This one. Guess I don't have this time just right. So you can see the berm coming up here. Uh, you will shortly see the, uh, there's a high density polyethylene liner that'll be installed on the inside of the berm here. Uh, it'll be a kind of a black swath. There you see part of it. Here it is. <clears throat> That's of course to keep the water in. That liner uh, is there's a pile of dirt placed on top of the liner. And then on top of that dirt is soil cement. And you can see the soil cement here. Now they're dressing the outside of the berm, uh, putting sod on it. Uh, stormwater management was a big issue here uh, during the construction of this reservoir. And, and uh, the authority staff had a novel idea and that stormwater was pumped into reservoir number one and then went through the water treatment process and supported uh, the, the demand out there. So we had an extra supply at that time. Now the, uh, the reservoir was substantially complete in July of 2009 and we began filling it in 2009. Thanks to a wet spring and a wet winter, the reservoir was full in March of 2010. So roughly nine months to fill during that, that time frame. Now that is not something that we can count on very often. And so what we've put into, the, uh, into the, the schedule for the new reservoir is two years to fill it. And that's a conservative estimate. It could be less, probably wouldn't be more, uh, but probably won't be nine months either. <clears throat> new water supply capacity is tracked here uh, from our facilities. We've got about 35 million gallons a day in, new, in uh, existing water supply capacity. We see 15 million gallons a day in additional supply coming online in 2030 from the reservoir and water treatment facilities. Out, uh, go out to 2036 for the next increment of supply capacity. That's a 5 MGD a reverse osmosis facility that would be completed. Uh, and then as we move further out in the 20 year planning horizon, another 3 MGD from the expansion of the ASR well field. Five-year CIP includes design and beginning construction on 45 miles of new transmission mains. Uh, and these are shown here. This is the phase 3C project. And this is the phase 2B and 2, 2B and 2C project. Phase 3C is envisioned as a 21-mile pipe that would connect to the northern end of the regional transmission system and go up and make a regional connection with Manatee County. Uh, that project is in the feasibility and routing stage now. That is supposed to be completed, the, that, that program in 2022 with beginning design in 2023 and beginning construction in 2026. The phase 2B and 2C project would pick up at the west end of the regional system here in Charlotte County and make this southern loop connection back up to Carleton, uh, the Carleton water treatment plant. That is a 24 mile pipeline and that also is in feasibility and routing study right now. Um, that'll be completed in 2022 uh, with the same time frame for, for design and construction as phase 3C. That is design beginning 2023 and construction 2026. This is a short clip that, uh, that Kevin uh, put together uh, on the Phase 3B project. 
And uh, this is a 48 inch diameter pipe installation uh, in Sarasota County. This project will be finished uh, next month. This is steel pipe and the contractor is using a trench box to minimize the width of the excavation and protect the workers uh, in this trench. Uh, the top of the pipe is going to be at least four feet below land surface, which means the bottom of the pipe is at least eight feet below land surface. Now these regional transmission mains are large, they're heavy, they require a lot of heavy equipment uh, to do the installation and enough land to accommodate that installation. So with the rate of growth and development in our region, identifying pipeline routes and getting to the point of acquiring easements uh, for these pipeline projects and the pump stations to serve those, pump, those, uh, those pipelines will help minimize costs uh, in the future because land's not getting any cheaper. And we've started that process with the feasibility and routing studies that are ongoing now for phase 2B and 2C and phase 3C. There are two additional pipelines uh, that will be installed in the 20-year planning horizon. We have a connection uh, with the Englewood Water District, shown here, and a, con a connection with Charlotte County's Burnt Store Water Treatment Facility uh, down here. Both of those are scheduled in the 2034 to 2041 time frame. And you can see the growth of the regional system here. Right now we have about 80 miles of regional transmission mains in, uh, in service. And uh, we will put another 45 miles of transmission mains in service uh, according to the plan by about 2028. Uh, and we go for a ways where we aren't building a whole lot of transmission mains and then we ramp it up in the late in the, in the planning period with those two pipelines I just mentioned, one going to Inglewood and one to, uh, one to uh, Burnt Store. So in summary, the draft 2022 to, 20, to 2041 CIP and CNA includes 16 projects totaling $658 million. Those projects would develop 23 million gallons a day of new water supply capacity for the region. They would install 72 miles of new pipelines connecting sources and demand centers uh, in the region and an additional six miles of pipe relocation and, re and replacement. There are four system-wide benefit projects uh, that would be completed uh, during that time frame. SWIPMUD has generously co-funded our regional water supply and transmission uh, projects in the past. And based on that partnership, we're anticipating about $308 million from the district uh, to co-fund these projects during the next 20 years. Now this draft CIP and CNA has been provided to your staff. We will discuss it in more detail with them at our professional staff meeting in early May. Uh, and as I said before, the plan is to bring this back uh, for your review and hopeful approval uh, at the June 2nd meeting this year. So with that, Mr. Chair, I would be glad to answer any questions on the, the CIP and CNA. Okay, I'll go last as I'm supposed to, but what other, any discussion, any questions, any thoughts from anyone? Doesn't seem like it. I, I do want to compliment staff. They just are very engaged, as you pointed out, with acquiring all this, getting a permission and or acquiring all this right, the rights of way. This is, uh, in, in counties that are growing pretty rapidly, this will be the, a major stumbling block, but you all are very much anticipating that. And uh, uh, thanks to our staff, we enjoy an excellent relationship with Swift Mud. So it's all moving forward pretty well. Anything else? Mr. Uh, Chairman, I do. Yes, yes sir. Uh, where's that connection for uh, with Inglewood Water District? The Inglewood you know, Water District? Yeah, do you know approximately the geographic location? It uh, It's going to be, it, it may end up actually being in uh, the Welland Park a portion of Welland Park that's south of 41, south and west of 41. Um, so, Inglewood Water District. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's they have you know 
that part of Welland Park is in the Englewood Water, Water District service area. Okay. So it may end up being there. We don't have a firm route for it yet, but where it's shown on the map is about the best we can do. Good answer. Uh, and <laughs> when, when Welland Park was, half of it was annexed into Northport. Right. What would the annexation line that I chose was the dividing line between Sarasota County possible utilities and Inglewood Water District. So that southern part, which is in the unincorporated Sarasota County, is Inglewood Water District. And you're right, it, most people are surprised when they realize it goes that far north. I knew it went that way, I just didn't know how far. Yeah. So I appreciate that. Right up to the Northport city line. Which line may go away someday. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Anything Read an article else? this morning. All right, thank you, buddy. Thank you. <clears throat> we are now on um, item number uh, five, uh, which is budget considerations for fiscal year 2022. And our executive director, Mr. Lehman, is going to work with us through that. And this will, doesn't need a motion, but it does need board direction. Yes, good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the board once again. I'm Pat Lehman, executive director. I'd say it's budget time, but it's budget time 365 days a year. However, today we're discussing the next year's budget for FY 2022, and our hope is to get direction confirmation from this board as to make sure that we implement the, uh, the board policies, directions, that, and goals and objectives you've established in your strategic plan to make sure that uh, we have the financial plan to go along with it. As seen on the uh, flow chart today, we're discussing those board issues. We'll be back at June 2nd with the tentative budget for uh, the next fiscal year. And then at your October board meeting, you will be presented with the final budget and also public hearing to adopt that budget. We are an enterprise fund. So what does that mean? We do not use ad valorem tax. We are primarily user pay. Of course, as Mike also pointed out, we're, we're lucky and fortunate to have a lot of grant money that we've secured in the past too. We do have two uh, functions of the authority. We have the administrative arm of the authority, which is the overall administration located in Lakewood Ranch. But the bulk of uh, the workers, the finances are down at the facilities with the O&M, technical services, construction services. To give you a, a time frame of, of how our budget works, and some of you are, are new to this board, the board by our uh, documents does adopt an annual budget. And once again, that will be held at a public hearing at a regular scheduled board meeting scheduled for August 4th uh, coming up, and that'll be in Manatee County. At that time, the board will adopt water rates and fees by resolution along with the budget. What are those rates, fees, and charges that are in the resolution? Obviously, the biggest charge are water rates. Those are the charges to, to uh, produce and distribute the water to our customers, which currently the users are Charlotte, DeSoto, Sarasota, and the city of Northport. We charge a member fee, which covers the administrative arm of the authority. That is to the four, mem four county bo boards uh, members, D Charlotte, DeSoto, Manatee, and Sarasota. We also have a planning assessment in accordance with the documents that are costs associated with the future planning of this authority to meet future needs. And that charge is split between not only the four members, but also the city of Northport as a customer. We also have an interconnect water charge, that is water charge to non-customers uh, non as defined by the master water supply contract. Currently that would be the city of Punta Gorda. So let's look at some of the key expenditures, the operations and maintenance coming up. And it, we have had stable operations over the years since uh, we've uh, had the new reservoir online and operations will be are anticipated to be fairly flat. Of course, they'll be reflect some inflation. The power and chemicals, which are our largest expenditures, will have some uh, inflationary charges to it, as we've already learned from our favorite company of FPNL. But uh, that will be incorporated into the rates. We are looking at two new personnel positions to achieve the strategic plan goals and objectives. One would be a water quality chemist in our laboratory. We have a state-of-the-art laboratory that we keep getting more and more uh, highly technical 
um, equipment in. Water quality is essential from the source through the treatment out to the customer. Uh, not only for safe supply, but also better uh, analysis gives us better treatment and cost effectiveness in how we use our chemicals. We're also looking at put the re uh, uh, outreach coordinator to strengthen our public and agency communication. We have a lot of big projects coming up, as Mike just showed you. Uh, we need a lot, a lot of information out there to, to your boards, to businesses, to the public, and to their other agencies. He also showed you how we estimate a lot of money coming from SWIPA. Do not, do not take that for granted. It takes hands-on, a lot of babysitting, making sure that everything goes right, as our chairman can attest to over recent events, to make sure we get uh, our share of the funding. Remember that the governing board, there are 13 members. Only three come from the South. So we, we are at the disadvantage, but we keep good relationships with all to make sure we, we uh, show it as a regional basis. So what are some of our other related expenditures that we want to uh, get concurrence and discussion from the board today? Contribution to R&R &R reserve to meet what our strategic goal is that the board established last year. Contribution to the disaster recovery reserve to meet the board policy that the board adopted last year. Continuing Swiftwood Cooperative Funding Initiative projects, which are in play right now, and actually last year the board set a funding program that would cover for the upcoming budget if this board so chooses to follow through. That being the <coughs> Peace River Reservoir Number no. 3 Siting and Feasibility Study, which is ongoing and funded with Swiftwood money. The Regional Loop 2B and 2C, which is ongoing and uh, partnering with SWIFTMUD. <coughs> also, the Regional Loop 3C routing feasibility study, which is ongoing and also cooperative funding by SWIFTMUD. We do have two new SWIFTMUD cooperative funding initiative projects that were approved for submittal by this board last year, which are on uh, target for SWIFTMUD uh, approval this year. Uh, the regional acquisition of Project Prairie Pumps and Storage Facility, which is currently a, a facility owned by DeSoto County, but located on the Charlotte County line, which will be intertied now, is intertied now, with the new pipeline to Punta Gorda. That facility would uh, truly be useful as a regional subtle station between Punta Gorda and the region now. So uh, there's great advantages to, for the authority to take ownership of that and transform it from a local facility to a regional facility. We also, and that also is one of the projects, as I said before, in the legislative agenda that is contained in the House uh, side of the, uh, of the budget. Also, the Peace River Regional Reservoir Number Three, the actual uh, start of the design, which uh, is a follow-up to the existing siting and feasibility, which we intend to start in the next fiscal year, and also would match up to Swiftmoot Cooperative funding. Looking at the water rates, which is of course the bulk of our uh, revenue, our water rate, much like how you charge your customers on the retail basis, we have a base rate allocation uh, charge which are all the fixed cost and distributed by the allocation established in the master water supply contract. That would be for uh, not impact Manatee County since you are currently not purchasing water. Also the user charge, which is the metered water delivered to each customer. And those are the variable costs, which as I said before, uh, pointed out before, chemicals and power are the primary drivers of that cost. You can see that our base rate charge, we do have a variation in the base rate charge, primarily based on debt service charges, as a, those that participated in the different uh, element, uh, phases of the water treatment supply, also those that participate in different pipelines. But we do have the fixed cost of O&M, which is a unitary rate and based on pro rata of your water allocation in the master water supply contract. We do utilize Stantec is our rate consultant and continues with us with a financial analysis and looking at the water use charge, which as I said before, emphasize our chemicals and power, which are utilized in pro rata to the actual water treated, that they would propose that the authority adopt a three cent per thousand gallon 
charge in the upcoming uh, fiscal year of 2022. Based on that would take it up from 79 cents to 82 cents per thousand gallons. Looking at a typical usage of residents within the four counties at 4,000 gallons per month, that would equate to a 12 cent, 12 cent per month increase on their total bill. And so go back to the r and reserve. Certainly aging infrastructure is a quandary everywhere, nationally, statewide, regionally. Last year we had a r and sufficiency study done for Black, by Black and Veatch. Their result was that we needed to increase our R&R over a time, to five year time period from two million to four million. The board last year adopted in the current budget going up to three million. The staff will look at with board concurrence looking at taking it up to the four million. And uh, it's a critical that we keep our existing infrastructure in good working condition. Our youngest, our youngest facility now is 10 years old. So it is starting to wear when, when it's under 24 seven, 365 days a year of operation. So we will look at uh, increasing that R&R up to the f amount recommended in the R&R sufficiency study that the board adopted last year. Looking at the disaster recovery reserves, the board adopted the policy last year to establish that up to a million dollar goal we currently have $650,000 within that. Staff will look at with board direction at achieving the policy goal of a million in the current budget, uh, making sure that we don't have rate shock to go with it. Looking at the continuing Swiftwood cooperative projects, as I said before, there are three. Two of them are the pipelines, the phase three pipeline, which is located in the Sarasota, the green, we are also looking at, no, I'm sorry. Uh, we also have the phase 2B and 2C down on the uh, Charlotte County Northport border going up to the Peace River facility that's under feasibility study now. We also have the siting and feasibility study for the new reservoir, which is ongoing now and funded by Swift Mud. Here again are just the descriptions of those, but the bottom line, they're all feasibility studies ongoing. This is how the uh, SWIFTMUD funding agreements that this board and SWIFTMUD entered into is the amount of funds uh, compared to the total project and the authority funds that would be required to match SWIFTMUD funds. To achieve that matching, the board last year adopted a two-year funding program which would come under the, the uh, planning fee that uh, we have it laid out here that would pretty much match last year's so the planning fee would consider to be flat that uh, the next year's budget would contain basically the same amount if the board so desires to move forward with how last year's board laid it out but that would complete funding matching for swift mud and those projects will move on looking at the two new projects we have uh, for swift mud that uh, the board approved and now we have to look at how we want to fund those two projects. As I said before, we have the Project Prairie acquisition, which is down on the county line. We also have the continuation of the new reservoir project, which will move into a three-year process of design up to the 30% level. This is how Swift Mud and the authority would lay out the, the funding for the, the reservoir that uh, you can see there that uh, a little over a million dollars a year authority funding would be required in order to match and obtain the swift mud uh, funding that they have proposed and we will look at in a, just a couple minutes some of the possibilities that this board could tell staff to move forward to to approve those funds also, the Project Prairie would be approximately $637,000 for authority funding to match Swift Mud funding to make that project move forward with acceptance of Swift Mud funding that's proposed. So bottom line, you can see some of the, the primary funding that would be required if, for staff to move forward with the goals and objectives and, and funding uh, projects requested by this board prior. 
R and R reserve, we could increase up to a million dollars, up to the four million dollars as set by board policy uh, goal. Disaster recovery fund increased contribution by up to three hundred fifty thousand in order to uh, meet the uh, uh, board's goal. Project Prairie acquisition and also the Peace River Regional Reservoir continuation, which would both be matching Swift Mud funding. There is a. It's not all doom and gloom where we're going to find the money. I can tell you on the bright side, thanks to this board and certainly driven by our chairman last year, that the bonds we had refunded, tremendous savings in, in that amount. We also uh, will be paying off, paying off the remnants of general, <laughs> general development utilities in the upcoming years. So there'll be savings with that amount. So what do those savings look like? The 2020 debt savings, it's almost $1.4 million that uh, this authority, we budgeted last year based on the bonds that were in place last year, but this year with the refunding of the bonds, we are paying almost $1.4 million less. But we have uh, still have those monies in, in in our rates, so we're accumulating those. Next year, the capital components, I said, the mortgage will be paid off, and you can have a, a burning ceremony out in DeSoto County to, to pay that off. There will be almost a $2 million savings, a $2 million savings reduction in what we uh, basically are debt for those. So there is a possibility of some <coughs> large amounts of money, not that we're gonna spend it just because it's available, but should we move forward to spend, you, should staff move forward to see if we can utilize those funds to pay for the projects, the policies that this board has put in place for R&R, the disaster recovery, and also continuation of future water supplies. So some of those pots of money, we have the savings that I just showed you from the bond series of 2020, and also the capital component, which will be gone. We have $2 million that this board set aside a few years ago in Orange Hammock funds. That was for mitigation opportunities on Orange Hammock. I, uh, I don't want to say that, that that's a dead issue. It's not a dead issue. That there's always opportunities, and we're working with SWIFT and the state on possibilities. So um, we would be very careful in how we do that. We could have transfer from other reserve funds that the authority has that are fully funded and perhaps have some funds available in it. We have potential increase in the carry forward, whether we have monies left over from this year's budget uh, to carry forward, and staff will be looking at that and forecasting what that may be. The Project Prairie, as Mike put in the CIP program, it could be uh, designated as a common benefit project, which puts it in a different funding category in the authority budget. We have a line of credit and income uh, already charged in the budget for that line of credit. So if the board were to opt and call that a common benefit project, it, it could uh, be beneficial to how we work that into the rates. And certainly the potential of state funds, which we, we keep putting our hand out like everybody else. And as I said before, the, the house has uh, some money in it and we hope to keep it that way. So the capital uh, component and debt service savings, uh, looking at different options, there could be monies left over from those savings. I'd hate to say, I'm not sure if I'm phrasing that right. I'm an engineer now, particularly the, the economist in the group. But uh, there, that could result in reduced base rate to the customers. It could be, or in return, it could be a rebate to the customers as we do with our uh, capital component coverage over each year. Or we could create a project savings account for the customer. We've done this in the past with some of our, our savings where we create an account that is in that customer's name for future projects so that it's basically pay in advance. It's almost like your Christmas savings fund. So those are some of the opportunities we wanted to have discussion with the board and uh, we we will take any board direction uh, to, to bring back and work into the uh, tentative budget at your next board meeting. Well, thank you, Pat. I've got a few things to say, but I'll, uh, okay. 
First of all, I, I, I think the way uh, this authority has always acted is now bearing significant fruit. First of all, we always have done things, and this is prior, certainly, certainly prior before I got here, but it has continued with all of you all. Uh, we do things sequentially. It was not just happenstance that a year and a half ago we asked for a new 50-year water withdrawal permit and increase the amount of withdrawal. That didn't just happen to happen. Uh, it happened because we knew in our minds that there was going to be the need for a third reservoir. I know I told my constituents a year ago that we've got a fine water supply, award-winning water supply for the next 20 years, even taking into account all the development and increases uh, in, in the amount of water needed. Well, with that 50-year permit, it guarantees uh, a 50-year supply of great water to our four counties. Additionally, uh, you can see we only use currently about 70 percent of the capacity that we do have. So. For people who want to say we're running out of water, these four counties are not, and we're in great shape. Now, our staff does many things that are invisible to the public and certainly visible to uh, the commission, uh, but we had four big bond issues, and three of them were at the point, the 10-year mark, where they could be called. and with interest rates really plummeting, they were called, and that amounted to the to a $20 million savings to the authority and to the members that had those bonds. <clears throat> the interesting thing, though, as, a, as opposed to what happens with us at our homes, where you have a 30-year mortgage and eight years into it, you refinance it, well, you get a new 30-year mortgage. The very interesting thing worked out by the, con the consultants that we used and our staff was that the end date for these four bonds, including the three that we just redid, the end date stayed the same. It didn't jog ahead another 10 years. Not coincidentally, that happened at exactly, not coincidentally, it happened at the same time that we're going to be beginning the funding of everything that occurs for the, thir uh, the re third reservoir. I mean, it's just very programmatic, and, and it's very, very logical. Now, anybody who has any influence with elected officials, you need to tell them how carefully the money is done. And all of this is happening with, if Pat can be believed, and I certainly think he and his staff can be believed, with 12 cents a month increase to our rate payers. I mean, it, it, it's phenomenal. And you all, I think this board would agree with me that you all need to be complimented. Uh, it is not just, didn't just happen. It took a lot of work on the part of our staff over the last several months for Swift Mud to, uh, to begin the process of agreeing, we'll see next week, uh, on the first three uh, years increments, uh, their portion of the funding for the third reservoir. So uh, we also had some good fortune. Uh, I know that Sarasota County had put in a lockbox $9 million to purchase Orange Hammock which we wanted to see because that protects the western flank of our facilities. But we also here put $2 million in a lockbox. Well, to some people's surprise, DEP went and purchased Orange Hammock, all 5,776 acres of it. And it didn't cost the authority or Sarasota County or Swift Mud any of the 20 to 22 million dollars that had been thought would have to be spent. So these are the things when, and, and Pat is just very careful to put everything up there. These are some of the benefits and some of the funds that are now sitting there. Uh, I, I, I just felt I wanted to put that into the record.
because so much of this goes unseen, certainly by the ratepayers, certainly by the general public, uh, certainly not by us, but staff doesn't get in all this enough uh, uh, praise. And also, it's a preemptive thing because we're going to drive staff absolutely crazy with all these miles, dozens and dozens of miles of pipeline, building a new reservoir, and we'll just drive them crazy. So I thought I'd compliment them before we take them on the next 10-year ride. I have to tell you, I just gagged a bit when they said it's going to take 10 years to build the reservoir. And I said, well, how, how come? Why? And then they told me at least probably at least two years to just fill the thing after it's built. And although I pretend publicly to know everything about everything, I never imagined two years to fill the reservoir. So any of you all, anything else to add to that? Yes, sir. Probably two years just to get a permit. <laughs> oh, that's the maybe problem. maybe you're being, you're being, you're being optimistic. Maybe maybe a little longer, right? Uh, well, one of the things I wanted to bring up, uh, and, and I'm glad we're being um, proactive on the R and R side of things, because you know when when I was elected here, and, and Commissioner Doherty is certainly aware of this, we both had questions about our Shower County utilities and the R and R program that was in place. It wasn't. Okay, so it's very important that we're proactive and we start putting this money away as quickly as possible because when stuff breaks, it's not inexpensive to fix. And, um, you know, I, I, I certainly think that we should push this to the four million as soon as we can. I'm, I'm certainly in agreement with that. Um, I agree with everything Commissioner Mayo said about the, the, the proactive ever molding piece of clay constantly being changed because it's, it's never going to end in one point with one form. And so I appreciate staff's efforts in continuing to move us forward in a pr very proactive manner and a very systematic manner. Um, certainly folks on this staff have a great control of planning and forecasting and, and modeling, and I really appreciate that. And I'll stop there. Anything else, folks? <clears throat> But the, <laughs> now, now, Pat, the next meeting, this board may just attack staff, but we don't we don't know. But for this meeting, you're in great shape. <laughs> I don't your that, budget. I don't don't think, let him get too comfortable, right? Yeah, I don't think that'll ever happen, though. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, do you have enough from us on item number uh, five? Yes, and we'll be back with the tentative budget for you to review and give comment. Okay. In June. We're now on item number six, the master water supply contract update, and uh, our Doug Manson, general counsel, is going to uh, help us with that. And this won't need a motion, but it's just a, a general status report. Well, you've heard all about the excitement we have, the idea that we're getting forward to, to build another six, a multi-billion gallon reservoir. Uh, and We've talked about the money and the financing and the opportunities there are going forward with it. But to me, the most exciting part is the contracts that make all this happen. So that's what my presentation is about today. And seriously, though, uh, we aren't going to go through the 80 some pages individually. That'll be my joy to do. But what we're talking about is updating the master water supply contract. We entered into it in 2005 before we built the first six billion gallon reservoir. So we just had the smaller reservoir you saw in the pictures. So it transformed the authority. An excellent contract to do so, but it's now been 16 years. I was a mere 44-year-old uh, child lawyer at the time. So now I'm a more mature lawyer and it's time to go back and look at the contract. Many of the things in the contract because of the 16 years are no longer there. In other words, there's many provisions about the regional expansion plan, which was the six billion gallon reservoir. It hadn't been built yet. So there are provisions about building it, how to build it, what type of process would be used. Obviously, obviously those are now outdated and need to be eliminated. And in general, there's many provision in the contracts that go to like payment schedules that have been completed. Uh, no longer, those payment schedules are no longer exist. Those payments aren't due anymore. And those things need to be up, updated and, and eliminated out of the contract. And other issues as we go forward, with, you know, over the 16 years, the boards have changed their vision and their plan subtly, but definitely distinctly. That needs to be reflected in the contract and clarifications of how we do things like demand projections and how we do things like the, the next big reservoir projects. 
So what we're doing and proposing to do and bring back to you will be suggestions for updating, modification, and clarification of the water supply contract, which is the main contract between the four, all of our five customers of four counties in Northport. Uh, bringing that back to you to be updated to take us through the next 10 or 20 years of water supply projects, water supply development, and operation among the customers. So today is just an informational item. We're working on it. I'm sure we'll be bringing it back to you in some form of a workshop uh, to discuss those specific concept items and propose those to us. But we wanted to let you know that we're working on it and that I definitely believe and it's time that we do that. 16 years uh, went by quickly. But it's a long time and things have changed substantially and we need to modify the contract to reflect that. I'm glad to answer any questions you have. Any, any questions? Imagine somebody who loves Thank you very much. the high point of his day is an 80 page uh, document to go over line by line. Bless you. <laughs> uh, you might want to just stay there if because uh, you're next up under the general counsel's report, Doug. I have uh, nothing new to discuss in my uh, general counsel's report. If you have any issues off of our Peace River Basin report, I'd be glad to address those. If not, I'll sit down. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, executive Director's report, Mr. Lehman. Uh, not much you want to tell us today, right, Pat? Uh, no, nothing new and exciting. Um. <laughs> You know, ru rumors start all over, don't they? I know there's a way to make this here. So you're, are you going to tell us this rumor is not true? That's that's fine. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out how to use th these uh, new fancy machines. There you ah. go. Well, I think it is appropriate being here in Charlotte County to bring up the fact that uh, we were born, born jointly together 30 years ago, May of 1991, at the stroke of a pen for general development utilities. Charlotte County Utilities was formed by accepting all the assets from general development that located in Charlotte County, took over ownership. The Peace River Authority took over ownership of the Peace River facility and all assets within DeSoto County. It's uh, <coughs> at that time, we were both pretty infant infancy and in, in, uh, becoming a utilities, but certainly now over 30 years have matured. It's quite a change, quite a change. Looking at 30 years ago, the 12 million gallon day, day plant from uh, general development, of course being a utility under bankruptcy, it needed a lot of tender loving care. It was 12 MGD design capacity. It might do that on a good day with the stars aligned and high tide and everything else, but uh, really needed a lot of work. So it's quite phenomenal that you look 30 years later at 51 million gallons per day treatment. And the visionaries on the board back at the acquisition thought, man, man that could be designed to get up to 30. And so it goes far beyond what those vi visionary people on this board looked at. Looking at the reservoir of a half billion gallon a day reservoir, and now you have over six and a half billion. And looking more to the future, and also with a permit that gets you 50 years into the future. In 1991, the administration was housed in the back bedroom of the Q House on the banks of Lake Manatee. It's quite a unique situation, but it served its purpose at the time. And now we are located as a true operating agency with a permanent home in Lakewood Ranch that will be there for years and years to come. So it's quite an effort of this board over the past, some tremendous true leadership. It's not just that the authority is infrastructure and getting together, it's four counties, four counties that have come together. And Doug can attest that 30 years ago and Ken was around 30 years ago, that some of those meeting, board meetings at the beginning with the acquisition of the facility were almost like the kids coming to kindergarten. Everybody wondering what the other kids are gonna do and afraid they're gonna take their toys and, and run away with them. But obviously, over 30 years, you have proven up cooperation, collaboration, the four counties working together. Each one of you can go back to your counties and attest to your residents. The benefit of this authority to your county, the benefits to this region as a whole. But certainly the time comes, I've been here for 29 years to witness all this. 
serving the last 24 years as an executive director. It's been a privilege. It's been a blessing. It's a career that a uh, little farm boy from Iowa couldn't ask for. But uh, the time has come, so I'm giving you notice that uh, I will be retiring, uh, looking at some time in the, in the summer time frame. Certainly, I'll work with this board to make sure there's a smooth, seamless transition. But I'd leave you in good hands. Um, I hate leaving this board because of the way you all work together. But I know you have the vision to move on. And I know the staff. Multiple awards, you can't ask for more. So with that, Mr. Chairman, thank you. God bless. Well, Pat, I think every commissioner here is going to have something to say. So let me start with uh, Mr. Langford. You're definitely going to be missed, Pat. Um, I've been on this board for, I don't even know now, eight years, ten years, something like that, and you have guided me through all of this because there's definitely a learning curve when you get thrown in the mix on this deal. It's it's a, a, a vast operation, um, and it's, it's probably, in my opinion, one of the most important um, boards that I set on over the National Commission. And um, I appreciate the guidance that you've given us over the years. Um, you've always surrounded yourself with excellent staff. I think I've said that in almost every review I've done for you, that you um, you surround yourself with good people and therefore good things happen. Um, it's uh, bittersweet to see you go. I kind of wish you had to stay here with us and, and uh, put up with all the things that's yet to come. But at the same time, I'm happy that you're going to be able to um, enjoy life, spend some time with your grandkids, and do the things that, that, that you should be able to do because you have uh, you have left us in a very, very good position. And there's not a lot of folks that can retire in life and look back at all the things that you've done. So congratulations, and you will be greatly missed. And we hope that we continue to see you from time to time. You can come sit with Commissioner Daughter at these meetings. So thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you very much. I look forward to be a citizen on the other side of the dais to give you all this mm. great comments. <laughs> <laughs> Who would like to go? Commissioner Cruz? Uh, I'll be quick. I just got here. Uh, I, I just want to thank you for everything you've done to, to get me up to speed. Uh, you know, this, this is a, a very important board, and I feel like uh, on an almost weekly basis. Uh, saying goodbye to somebody retiring who was around me for this Peace River because it was Mark and, and Manatee County. But, you know, we were able to, to successfully re replace Mark with with Kevin. And I know you've built up an amazing organization around yourself, and we're all going to be in good hands. But I do want to thank you for the time you spent with me in your office, ramping me up, passing along at least a small, small sliver of your institutional knowledge that you built up here and, and making this uh, such a, a great organization, a great authority. And, uh, and I thank you, Manatee County. Thanks, you. And uh, you know, I enjoyed the, the brief time we've had to work together. And, and hopefully we do get to, to see you again. And uh, yeah, I may be reaching out to you every now and then while you're on retirement and asking you a question. <laughs> so that's it. Thank you very much. Mr. Chua. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Pat, you and I go back probably nine years now, uh, a little over. And, uh, you know, in the beginning, I was trying to make every single meeting. I know how important this board is. Um, and the only reason that the commission is more important than this water authority board is because you have to be there to be here. Because this is water is one of the most important things, if not the most important thing that every citizen recognizes in every co county of this region and around the state um, and, and beyond. You've always been open. You've always been welcoming to me. You've always shared information freely. Uh, you've never held back. Uh, you've educated me over years, not just once I got on this board, although I do kind of have a complex that once I got here, finally you'll, you're leaving. So there might be something in correlation with that. I'm not exactly sure. He assured me that's not true. Uh, but, you know, uh, all seriousness, you all have done a, a fantastic job. You have led this ship. I know it takes a team. Um, and whether it's here, whether it's been in DeSoto, Manatee, or in Tallahassee, uh, I always appreciate the opportunity to speak and learn from you. And uh, I wish you well. 
Last time I talked to him on the phone, he was actually going to pick up his grandkids. So I know that's a very important part of your future, and I welcome you to that part of the world. I hope you relax for, for a little while, uh, enjoy those grandkids, and you're always welcome here. Thank you so much. Yeah. <clears throat> well, Pat, I had the uh, pleasure for many, many years being one of that gang sitting out there <clears throat> watching what was going on. And for the last six years and four months after I got elected and asked to sit on this board, uh, You've just been great. Your staff has been great. Uh, I can't say enough nice things. I incorporated those earlier remarks because we knew that this was coming. And uh, it really is this, what you've built here is, is pretty sturdy and is going to last even after you're gone. Uh, we can blame your beautiful wife, your wonderful children, and those great grandchildren as part, mostly part of the reason that you want to retire. Uh, and I know that, and I was getting worried because I noticed every vacation was this grand tour to hit every child and every grandchild's house. So I suspected it was coming, but uh, it's still a little jarring when it does occur. Uh, we are gonna talk about you after you're gone, <laughs> I'll do my best to make sure this gang up here is only saying nice things, but no guarantees. But we absolutely will miss you. And you have just done great things for me in my career and my knowledge base about this. So thank you. Thank you. Anything else, folks? Well, the rest is going to be in a climatic after that announcement, but you, you all have in your package the routine status reports. Any further board member comments? I have no other speaker cards you see on your agenda. The next meeting is going to be in uh, Sarasota County on June 2nd, and the rest of the meetings for the year are posted there. So with that, Thank you, everybody, for everything you did today, and we are.